Because what, what the rap audience ain't ready for is a real person. You know what I want to say, a real N-I-G-G-X. I'm coming out my 100% real. I ain't compromised with Nathan. Anybody that talk about me got problems. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be straight up like if I was a street person. That's how I'm coming at the whole world, and I'm being real about it. Let's talk about it. Cause when you got a story real as mine, you can't leave nothing out. It's take you back to 9-6. Nas was now one of hip-hop's biggest stars, but he soon found himself unwittingly in the crosshairs of the East Coast-West Coast feud, as Tupac Shakur began calling him out on records and in the streets. I heard he made a record about me, and he was in New York, and nobody from New York is really, they, they talk it, man, but all these, all them companies don't really hold it down. And what happened was, you know what I mean, I, he was in my town, so, you know, me and my crew was there, so we stepped it up. Him and Suge, and you know, we had to, we, we wanted them to tell us what was up, you know what I mean? Because we, we like this guy's music, but he can't be in my town dissing me. I had runners with Suge, niggas would have been Suge. At the height of the beef, they started death from East. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game. This ain't no game. I didn't see myself as his enemy, but he felt like I was in the middle of a war with him. He's all or nothing, and that's the way he had to set it off. The night of September 4th, the looming tension came to a head when the two rappers crossed paths at the MTV Video Music Awards after party in New York City's Bryant Park. When we get to the after party, Nas grabbed Tupac by the back. Boom, come here. Where you going? We stepped to him and shrug and, you know, we were like, you in our city. But when you in my city, you know how we coming. Animals in the field and most of them clutching. 40, 50 of us is like packed around him, where him and Nas is like squeezed in the middle doing this talking. But I was right there on the side. My friend had the gun. I was trying to take the gun from him to shoot Tupac. Let's talk about it. Back on Jungle Toe, Pac is on as soon as we walk about this. So what happened was we went to him and stepped to him. With tempers flaring, Nas and Tupac decided to clear the air. You know, we got to the bottom of it right then and there. I told him I'm hearing you about the diss me in an album, and he said, yeah, I got this album where I, I came at you because I heard you were coming for me. I'm like, I got no songs about you, bro. And uh, the brother was like, nah, I'm from New York, man. Me and you, Nas, we like this. Don't never let nothing come between us. And he told me that I'm going to hear a lot of things that he said about me, and he's going to hear a lot of things that I said about him, but put it past us, and we powerful people, and let's move ahead. And we shook hands and said, we'll talk on a later note. And he was like, Nas, me and your brothers, we're never supposed to go at it, not me and you. These are his words. He's like, man, I'll take that off the album. Come meet me in Vegas. Everything I knew now, I wish I knew back then. Like it was only so much time left before Machiavelli to Don left. But the two rappers would never meet again. By the time Nas arrived in Las Vegas, Tupac Shakur had been gunned down. I flew to Vegas to shoot the Street Dreams video in Link with Tupac. Trying to squash the East Coast, West Coast beat. What happened was, three days later, he was gone, and we never got a chance to really talk. Mm. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. Let's get the business real quick. Um, so Nas dropped KD2 this weekend, Friday, to be precise, right? That's King Disease Part 2. And a lot of you guys been hitting me up saying, Gab, what's your opinion on it? What you think about the song Death Row East? Honestly, I think Nas is haunted by, you know, what took place between him and Tupac. I think he's still upset because they never got to finish whatever it was they planned on doing. Um, you hear Nas say Tupac's name like on his last five albums. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that, you know, whatever it is, it's still in Nas, is what I should say. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I think he likes the dialogue. I think he likes people talking about him and Tupac. You know, um, sometimes I think he likes to play into the fact that they had a beef at one point in time. And I think he also wants people to know that him and Tupac had moved past that. So it's like, you know, friend or foe situation, but he liked the fact that it was a situation that, you know, that people actively talk about. And I'm sure it's good for record sales. 
Let's not be stupid at the end of the day. Nas is a very savvy businessman. And, you know, he hear the people talking. But let's get back to the song. Um, I think the song is dope. You know, I hold no bars in saying that, you know, I think Nas is a dope artist. Tupac thought Nas was a dope artist. Nas thought Tupac was the GOAT. So let's get that out the way. But let's go to the subject matter of the song. I think all he did was kind of like give you a glimpse of what was going on at the time. And I think, you know, Hip Boy gave Nas the perfect trampoline for him to do flips and cartwheels and, you know, to, um, to paint a vivid picture for you. You know what it was like at the time. And you hear Nas say over and over and over again that this was a very real and serious threat. The whole Death Row East situation. Because it's one thing to beef with a dude across the country, 3,000 miles away. But Death Row was opening up shop and planting a flag right dab in the middle of New York. That's a problem. That's a problem for, for, for Biggie and Bad Boy and whomever Death Row had on that radar. So at the time, it would make sense for Nas and Tupac to get together and try to squash that before that, you know, that tidal wave come flooding into New York. And uh, shout outs to Eric B because Eric B was the glue that brought Nas and Tupac together and made them brothers talk. Because it was about to get ugly. Straight up. And, um, you know, Nas gave a lot of you know, insight on what was happening at the time. Even on this song, he gave a lot of insight to what was happening. Like that night, a lot of people like to reference what happened at Bryant Park. You know, one of the things he said, you know, the jungle told Tupac is on as soon as we get out of here. And, you know, you hear the stories about jungle. You know, both crews was deep. You know, Fatal had bought the Jersey dudes there, they was in New York already, so Nas had whoever he had with him. And he, it could have been a very bad situation, man, but it's all in the past. It's hip-hop history. Like I said, you know, Nas don't have to talk about it, but the fact he does, you know, is it's big for the hip-hop fans. The hip-hop heads eat it up. You know, they have two great artists like this, you know, bump heads and, you know, come out of it, you know, with a better understanding of each other. And, you know, now it still talks about Tupac, you know, and um, you had, you know, the outlaws say that Tupac was playing Nas the whole time he was in Vegas. But in my opinion, I think that the situation itself Nas really can't get past it. You know, I really think that it bothered Nas. Especially, you hear the brother say he flew out to Vegas to try to squash the beef with Tupac. And Tupac got killed before they could even get together. You know, you heard Nas say that, you know, when him and Tupac agreed to work together, he couldn't sleep. He was so excited he couldn't sleep because, you know, he... uh couldn't imagine what it would be like working with Tupac, doing music. And I say this, and I said this before, and I'm saying again, I feel like the hip hop community was robbed by not getting a chance to get these two brothers, you know, on the same tracks, you know, in the mic booth somewhere, man. It would have been epic. <laughs> I don't care what you say. But, you know, they had that thing, you know, Pac was riding on Nas, you know, Nas took a couple jabs back, but at the end of the day, they came together, man, and, and was trying to make it right. Never happened, man. But anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie, Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.